What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Frank Ocean's Basement. I'm your host, Prometheus, the Greek god, not the movie. Recently, I've been on a more kick of uploads lately. Ones with more... Uplifting is the right word. Not terrifying? Question mark? I haven't covered anything truly scary in a little bit. Guess what I found. Now, people usually have no fucking idea who I make videos about. But this one's interesting. It isn't some legendary album from 20 plus years ago. It's actually a newer release, a much newer release, from the bowels of Bandcamp. Well, that's where I found it, at least. So I'm trying to open up new avenues of how I find albums to make videos on. So if you have a Bandcamp release you think I'd enjoy, leave in the comments section. I'll check that out, please. Thank you. Speaking of Bandcamp, I found a very interesting sounding release that I'd like to share with you today. If you like albums that are described with such words as post-industrial, dark ambient, electroacoustic, spoken word, drone, neoclassical dark wave, and death industrial, you're in for quite a treat. Now, let's get down to brass tacks. So who is this Pan Dai Jing? I am so glad you asked. Pan Dai Jing is an avant-garde electronic musician born and raised in Guiyang, China, and currently based in Berlin, Germany. I stumbled across Pan's work after taking a deep dive into the underbelly of Bandcamp, like I mentioned previously, and the cover for her new album, Jade, caught my eye to say the least. This cover just screams found footage to me, and I needed to know what this thing could possibly sound like. So before I started listening, I dove into who she was and some background. Panda Jing has released four albums, Sex and Disease in 2016, A Satan in Sight in 2017, Lack in 2017, and Jade in 2021. Yeah, usually the stuff I cover is like 15 year old album, Laser Esh onto a pizza box and rediscovered in Atlantis, but this is on Bandcamp and all major streaming services too. An aspect of Pan's career that I find very interesting is her experimental art installations. She's not just a musician, she's a performance artist. She has these displays across the world I can only describe as fever dream-esque. The imagery used here is borderline disturbing and just extremely unsettling. I feel the photos and videos being presented here is enough to get the message across. Some very interesting stuff, to say the least. I'm not going to have time to get too into this aspect of her work, but if this has tickled your fancy, her website has a list of all installations she's done. So with some background on the character who made this, her extracurriculars outside of music, and that imagery nuzzled tight into the back of your noggin, let's get into the music. The best label to give this piece is Experimental Industrial Electronic. Avant-garde IDM? Scary? I don't know. But this thing was polarizing to me from when I first heard it, and still is polarizing to me as I write this script. It's a crisp 9 tracks at a tight 37 minutes. It's industrial, it's clean, it's terrifying, it's calming, it's perfect for this channel. It's really a trip, I highly recommend checking this out if my dissection sounds interesting to you. The album opens with the track, Clean. Ironically, this is probably the furthest thing from clean. It starts with these distorted kicks and snares of some kind, but if they were recorded inside the movie Eraserhead. This is juxtaposed with these high-pitched vocal humming, sounding intoxicating, like I've just fallen asleep, or I'm falling down the black abyss from Get Out. Halfway through the track, these stabbing bass hits are combined with this high-pitched vocal synth. This first track is a trip. It's a trip to hell, essentially, and an eerie start to the record. The next song is The Goat. Arguably, this is cleaner than the track titled Clean, with these deep heartbeat pulsing 808s with these cricket sounding synthesizers and hits of brass like a trumpet or low saxophone throughout the song. A bizarre combination, but this is prime movie soundtrack material. This song also gives us the first lyrics on the album, in this spoken word manner. There's no official lyrics to this that I could find anyway, but the opening line seems to say the following. I didn't ask you to stay, but you stayed. I never asked who you were or what you wanted. Was I not strong alone? Did I ever need you too much? Stay a bit longer, not too long. Possibly hints at a one-sided relationship, needing a partner so much, you ask all these questions about why they're leaving. Note, this is my judgment call, so make of those lyrics what you will. This transitions into the song Dick T. This track is so ominous and creepy. This low bass rumble of a distorted violin with these siren-like synths, mixed with this borderline relaxing humming from Pan just makes my skin crawl. This gives me an extremely specific vibe. Shout out to all my gamers out there. 
don't know if you've heard of this game or played it. It's a little game known as Little Nightmares. Great game, it's a game I actually sat down with and played multiple times. That's a rarity for me. It's a great game, and this reminds me of the villain in that game, the lady. She has this alluring humming she does that lures children into her grasp, and this sounds like it was plucked straight out of that game. Even though it feels wrong to have a favorite song off of this type of record, this is probably my favorite so far. The next song, Tilt, is an auditory sound collage of differing variations of mechanical feedback, with more spoken word mixed with these diabolical laughs and sounds of someone walking across loose floorboards. A deep bass and piercing synthesizer is crawling all over this track. I don't know if this is Pan or someone else, but a demonic, distorted voice keeps repeating H-O-A. With all the sounds and harsh noise bursts, the song itself sounds like it's in pain and writhing around on the floor screaming. Next track seems to be the most well-known off the record, Dust. This track has probably the closest thing to a quote danceable beat. This strange math rock-esque bass synth creates this quasi danceable song as the lyrics on this track sound like they're from a haunted church choir, repeating the phrase my home over and over. A very chilling song and a calm in the storm to mark the halfway point of this album. Where when I said calm before the storm, well, the storm sirens have started on the track ran. This has more screaming synthesizers and this pulsing high frequency bass right in your ear. Like an alien has abducted you and is forcing you into this machine making all these strange noises. Swelling and swelling creating some of the strongest tension on the entire album. Feeling as if you're hiding from a monster in the alien movies and it's right around the corner as you hold your breath hoping you don't get seen. The track Let Opens strangely calm. Water sound effects are overlaid with this beautiful piano and twinkling synthesizer. After being assaulted with these monstrous synths and distorted screams, this song was just so incredibly disarming to me. Like I finally made it to a safe room in Silent Hill. Pan also returns with more spoken word, seemingly a continuation of the story laid out earlier on the record on the track The Goat. Either this is from another person's perspective, or Pan now experiencing the things she was describing earlier. The lyrics read, I take my bath in the ocean. I can't get out. I fell, looking for something like me. Walk around. I think of quitting. I can leave whenever I feel. As the track goes on, it continues to decay with these deep whale noises and pulsing underwater tones, like you've truly fell deep into the ocean. That transitions into the song Metal, coming out the gate swinging with these sounds of bees or some kind of insect distorted and duplicated like I'm inside some hellish version of a butterfly sanctuary. This harsh industrial rumble cuts through the track, drowning out all natural insect sound, effectively killing all organic life in the track as this loud, yelping, operatic solo singer slowly rises in volume along with the instrumental. The tension couldn't be higher as we transition into the final track, MoMA Forever low distorted bass instrumentation and sharpened synthesizers overlaid with mechanical noise and Pan's constant repetition of the phrase, I forget her. Sounds like someone on the brink of complete mental collapse. A single piano note is being played asynchronously to the rest of the track, runaway style. More abstract synthesizers and a mechanical noise being introduced until the track can take no more, until it slowly collapses in on itself and the album comes to a close. This thing is insane a proper post-industrial horror album. The sounds being created here are just so fascinating and mind-boggling. This is definitely on the more unique side of things I've listened to in 2021. I can't praise this thing enough without sounding like a broken record, so let's put it to this. If you want a surreal, scary, atmospheric, haunting, and paralyzing listen this Halloween, look no further than Jade by Pan Dai Jing. Thank you for watching, y'all. I hope you enjoyed your stay here. I thought it was pretty cool personally, but I'm pretty biased. This is kind of getting back to my roots of a scary unknown album, so let me know what your thoughts are below. I mentioned how this was a Bandcamp release I stumbled across, so if you have an interesting underground release you think I'd enjoy, put it in the comments and I will gladly check it out. If you would like to listen to this album yourself without a silly bozo talking over it the whole time, it's available on all major streaming services and Bandcamp, obviously, and if you'd like to pick it up on vinyl. Uh, hopefully some copies remain, but expect for them to take 27 years to get there. No work cited, just a pretty pleased to check out the description for my other stuff, music, podcasts, and Patreon. But yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching me lose my last shred of sanity with a totally unnecessary October upload schedule. And remember, as long as you don't play this on the Ox at your next Halloween party, then you're good to go. So thank you for watching, I appreciate it, and have a pleasant day.